Our next caller is Pam from Oregon. Pam, what's going on? How can we help you? Hi, guys. Um, thanks for taking my questions. I actually have three, but we can take them one by one just to make sure the timing works out. Okay. Um, so quick background. I started working out seriously about two, three years ago, and I've been rock climbing for about three, four years now. And I always hated cardio with all my heart. Um, my goal for now is just getting stronger, mostly to assist my climbing skills. So listening to your podcast, it felt very liberating to understand that's not a necessity for better health. Um, however, when I go on hikes and backpacking and everything, I can feel the lack of endurance. It's hard to keep up with um, my friends who are much better. Um, so I'd like to keep some form of cardio just for that. Um, yeah. Right now, I usually finish my workout with just a 15 minutes high intensity training cycling session. Um, However, so from what I've learned from you guys, the signals leveraged by strength training and cardio are kind of antagonists. So my question is, um, am I impeding on the outcomes of my workouts when I wrap it up with a short, high-intensity cardio session? Mm. Yeah, probably not. No, okay, so here's I want to be clear here with, the, with that message of the competing signals. If the cardio is improving your health and if it improves your ability, your work capacity – it can actually help you build muscle. Okay. So if you got like a, let's, I'm going to paint a picture. This is not you, but let me just paint a picture. You got a dude only interested in building muscle. All he does is lift weights and feed himself a lot of food. And as a result, his stamina goes way down. He starts to suffer in his workouts. He's breathing hard just when he's bench pressing, but he doesn't want to do any cardio because he doesn't want to prevent himself from gaining muscle. Okay. In that case, a little cardio would improve his health and would actually help him build a little bit of muscle. So it does depend on the individual. Now, you did mention that one of the reasons why you want to do this is that you notice when you go hiking and stuff with your friends, you're losing some stamina. The best thing you could do if you want that kind of stamina is to practice more of that. So I would do the hiking as part of your routine, if possible, to give you that endurance and stamina. Otherwise, what you're doing on the bike is probably absolutely fine. Of course, we have to look at everything. So if you're on the border of overtraining and you throw that in, it might be too much. But if you're fine and you're noticing that you're recovering fine, I don't think it's a problem it's to fine. do what you're doing. It's fine, but it's not really going to help what you're trying to do, right? If you go for a hike, I'm assuming you don't, with your friends, sprint for 30 seconds and then walk with them and then sprint for 30 seconds while them, and then you guys stop at 15 minutes. Like, So your yeah. body's going to get good at whatever you do. So if, if that's the only form of cardio and then you do these long, you know, three mile, five mile hikes, or you're rock climbing for two or three hours and you're getting gassed and fatigued. Well, it's because you haven't trained the body to get good at that. And so actually dedicating, you know, a day or two a week to a, you know, longer, lower intensity type of cardio session is going to benefit that. Um, and like Sal said, it, it's, it's such a hard thing for us to communicate on this podcast because we come off like we're, we're anti-cardio. It's just that it, it, it really depends what the main goal is. Your goal is very specific here. You want to be strong and you want to build muscle, but then you also need to be able to go on these long hikes or long bouts of climbing. And so as a, as a trainer who's programming for you, I've got a program in there. Even if it means mm -hmm. we get, you know, one tenth less muscle building this month. It's okay because I, you also are doing this other thing. If you were that example, Sal said, and you, all you cared about was, I just want to add muscle, add muscle. Well, then maybe I'm a little more reluctant to add cardio in there. But for someone who who needs it for what you're trying to do, I'm, abs I'm absolutely going to program something that mirrors what you want to do. Obviously, the most ideal would be get out and go do a hike that would be just like the hike you're going to do with your friends once or twice a week. Otherwise, you can try and uh, imitate that inside the gym, doing it maybe right. on the stair mount. If it's or a something. performance thing, if you can emulate it around like what you actually want to, you know, have endurance for, uh, that would be the ideal situation. But yeah, to to that point, it's <clears throat> you need a gas tank in order to kind of fuel you for a lot of these other extracurricular activities. So there's a way to kind of incorporate that and train that. And so uh, it. In terms of competing, you might, you know, compete, you know, a little bit in terms of just like focusing directly on building muscle. But, uh, you know, for, for that reason, there's nothing wrong with and that. You know, it'd be a good workout program for you. Map strong. I think map strong would probably oh, yeah, give you work capacity. Yeah. That would give you, that would give you some of that because the work sessions in map strong are, they, they, they do require some stamina. 
for sure. So if you if you don't have that program, we can send it to you and you can give that one a try. I like that. But that one's that one's going to help you across the board, I think, in, in terms and, of what you're doing. And then just, uh, just make sure you do a good job. Like I love to get um, some good liquid calories before I go on like, like if a, a bout of cardio like this because your goal – isn't about leaning. You're not. You're not doing cardio to get leaner or drop weight. You're doing cardio for performance reasons. And so, make sure you're you're fed well. You know, make sure you go into those bouts of of cardio with a good amount of calories. I like to do some liquid calories about 30 minutes in before I go into it, and then make sure that I replenish right away. So as soon as I'm done with that bout, I'm replenishing with some calories uh, right away. That will also help. Uh, mitigate any potential, you know, muscle loss from from the reduction or the increase of in uh, of movement and intensity. Yeah, it's, that's a. I'm I'm very curious about the map strong too. That's um, I definitely want to check it out. Cool. You said you had some other questions. Yes. So um, the second one is completely unrelated. So I said I, I I was rock climbing and I noticed consistently that after like a two hour session, I can do um, my max is about eight pull ups. Um, pretty easily and whenever I go to the gym and I try to repeat that just to make sure I get um, the pull-ups reps in I can never reach even half of that I, I get so weak even though I I do some of the upper body workouts before and I can never figure out how what it is I thought it was maybe activation like I tried to do some lat pull downs um, it doesn't really help I'm, I'm just uh, and it's very consistent I don't think it's like an anecdotal so do you have an, have you have any experience with that? Or do you know what I can do to make sure that I max out every time I go to the gym? Yeah, I mean, it, it, boy, there's there's there could be so many different factors. You know, what did you do the day before? Are you working out your about your strength training your upper body before you attempt some of these pull ups? But also, generally speaking, if you want to get better at pull ups, both at the gym and at w when you're rock climbing, one of the best things you could do, Pam, is to practice pull ups every day. Now you said your max is seven to eight at the rock climbing gym and about three or four at the gym gym when you're working out. I mm -hmm. would say do like two pull-ups, you know, every three hours. Like get a pull-up bar in your house and do like one or two pull-ups. Just easy. Practice them every single day. It's the fastest way I've ever seen people improve their strength in a specific movement. It, mm. it literally it works really quickly. But the intensity needs to be low. So, you know, if you could do four or five. Two, you just get up on the pull-up bar, do two reps, jump back down, go about your day. A couple hours later, try it again. Do this every single day, you know, maybe four times throughout the day, and you'll notice it, you know, how much stronger you get. And then don't increase those reps until after like six weeks. Even mm. if two now feels super easy, just keep practicing. I say stay with the amount of reps, increase the tension. So uh, in terms of like quality of reps and being able to kind of like, I know a lot of times with pull-ups, sometimes there's a leak in performance. So if, you know, you have any kind of body part that's loose, you know, you got any swing that you have to address. I mean, isometrics in general too for, you know, rock climbing is going to be hugely beneficial. Uh, but to, to really be able to have that ability to tense your entire body, your core and stay tight and controlled uh, and just try to rep it out as, you know, the, the best quality reps you can possibly do. You're going to add, you know, a lot of benefits to that in terms of technique. Uh, to add on to Justin's advice, something you can play with that'll be fun for you to try out if you've never done this before is find a weight that is heavy for you to deadlift like five reps, like a really heavy uh, deadlift weight and do one to two reps of that for two to three sets before you go into your pull-ups and then go to your pull-ups and see what you notice. Mm, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. But so when I do the pull-ups every day, I really don't chase fatigue, right? No. It's just no. No. you're yeah. literally practicing them. Yeah. Literally, you're just jumping up, doing a couple, come back down, go about your day. Okay. Okay. Um, interesting. And then the last one, um, it's uh, kind of related to some some of the things I've learned on your podcast, which is um, switching up tempo and rhythm in general to try to break plateaus. And I was wondering if there is any um, advantages of switching up also the tempo and a number of reps and the load also across sets within a same session or those variations should really be kept for um, breaking up plateaus after maybe a few weeks of doing the same. Yeah. Physiologically, doesn't really make a difference. Uh, your body's going to adapt well doing both. Psychologically, doing one particular style for three weeks and then switching tends to work better because you know, shorter rest periods, for example, or faster pace, it's a different mentality. It's a different 
psychology go into your workout when you're lifting heavy and you're resting long versus when you're doing supersets or versus when you're doing bodybuilding versus when you're doing powerlifting and switching the mentalities quickly from set to set often results in uh, subpar results. It, it often results in like, well, I'm kind of, I like one better than the other. So my mindset's in there and I'm going to get this one done because I need to versus three weeks. I know, cause here's what I, what, hap what happens to me when I'm in a particular phase of training for three weeks, the first couple workouts, I'm not fully in it psycho psychologically. And then after that, I'm really into it and I get really good at that mental part of the training, but physiologically really no difference. Studies will show that it doesn't make that big of a difference. Uh, either way, it also it also makes it more difficult to measure uh, which tempo or what rep range or what rest period uh, is benefiting you the most at that time. So if you're kind of like mixing it all up in in a single workout or changing it day to day, it's hard to see that. Oh wow, I notice when I do these rest periods or I do this tempo. Yeah, was it the slow one or the fast one? Right, it's or? it's really hard for you to measure. That's really because they've done studies where they have people mix it up every single day and then people stay very consistent for two to three weeks. And the results are very, very close. I mean, it's splitting uh, splitting hairs is the difference. But we always talk about the psychological piece or the behavior piece. And when we're coaching and training clients, it's just easier to stay focused on one tempo or one rep range for an extended period of time so that you can just better can evaluate, evaluate it. it. You can yeah. look at it at the end of the week and go like, oh, wow, that... I could feel the difference from changing my tempo to this, to that versus if you're doing that every other day or in a workout, uh, the exercise, it's really tough to, to measure that. I just think the psychological benefits of like being able to see or feel yep. the change, uh, helps out. Totally. That makes a lot of sense. Um, thank you guys so yeah. much. Thanks for calling. Thank you, Pam. Pam. Right. Appreciate it. Yeah. It's, um, you know, and there's a theme oftentimes with certain questions. And one of the things that comes up often for us is like, I want multiple things. Yeah. Right. How do I train for multiple things? Now, this is a general statement, but it's, I think it's true kind of across the board, which is if you focus on one thing, one goal, you get a lot of that goal and you get a little bit of other goals that you're not focused on. If you mm -hmm. focus on a lot of goals, you get some of all of those goals, but you get, you don't get a lot of any of them. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and that's a compromise and that's okay. And that's the mental piece. Like, okay, I'm going to train for strength and endurance. I can't go into it thinking I want my strength to be my PR all the time. That's like, that's the wrong mentality. Yeah. Wow. I also want to be better at cardio. Yeah. It's, it's just, just like, it's just not going to work. And then as far as cardio is concerned, again, if it improves your general health, it can have an, a, a benefit beneficial effect on muscle building. When we talk about cardio and some of the ways that we do, we're talking to the cardio fanatics they overdo it or that's the cornerstone of the routine right. and they just want to lose body fat, in which case it's not a great long-term strategy. That's what we constantly communicate, but we're not anti-cardio. All of us do some form of cardiovascular conditioning or training at some point or another to complement our strength training and, our, and improve our quality of life. So we got to be very clear with and that. I, and I really think that if, if that she was just trying to improve the quality of her life and, you know, have some sort of, uh, you know, cardio uh, abilities, the 15 minute high intensity thing is a great way to do it after your workout. But she has something even more specific. She's rock climbing yeah. or she's hiking. Yeah, for go hike. Yeah. For an extended period of time. And training that way isn't going to help that that much. It'll help it a little bit, but not that much because it's not specific enough to what she's Dude, doing. I tell you what, um, this is so true, right? It's strength is very specific. Stamina can also be very specific. Like I remember sp mm -hmm. like for personally, when I was really heavy into training jujitsu, sometimes, rarely, we would cross train and we get a boxing coach in there or a Muay Thai coach. And I could roll for an hour with different people on the ground and I would build all the stamina and I have no problem doing it. Then I'd go hit the pads and I'd gas out after 15 minutes, not even 15 minutes, 10 minutes. Yep. And I remember thinking, what the hell? And I'm like, well, this is different. Completely different monster. It, yeah. It's it, a different monster. I mean, it's a very similar example, but like running lines on the field where it's everything's flat and controlled versus now I'm running uphill. Like yeah. that was a complete different experience. And, and yeah, it's very specific to what you're doing. Totally. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.